Hello, Craig. Hi there. Good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you again. I'm so glad we met in that Me kind too. of abstract way of meeting people, which is through uh, the internet. But Absolutely. I, I was so surprised when I got your uh, message, too. Well, I'm thrilled to, I'm, I look, anyone that's on the same page politically as me is a pleasure these days since yeah. so many people like <laughs> over to the dark side, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I think it would be great for us. But first, tell me a little about you that you're a writer. I want to know, because I looked at some of your stuff on uh, Amazon, but yeah, um, doing this and yeah. So I'm originally from Baltimore and um, I went to college in Virginia. I went to Hampton University in Virginia and I was a journalism major. And so originally I thought I wanted to do broadcast news. And then my second year at, at Hampton, I realized that that wasn't the style of writing that I wanted to do because it's more curated and today it's a fire. The next day it's, you know, the election. And then another day it's something about octogenarians. <laughs> So I, I knew I wanted to do more of a creative style. And so I originally moved to Atlanta in 98 to write music. And that's really all I thought I wanted to do was write music because I demoed my first song at, at college. I didn't sing it, a friend of mine sang it. I just wrote it. And um, so I moved here, but once I got here, I started to come to terms with being gay. I started to really confront it and um, started dating the first thing that I really did that was produced and published was a stage play called A Day in the Life. And um, that show sold out here in Atlanta. Um, I ended up writing the music for the show as well. But concurrently, I started a greeting card company called Say It in a Card. And ironically, we're talking about this because I just launched the Say It in a Card app and it's available on iOS and Android. And so the cards are sent digitally now, but we have breakup cards, um, congratulations cards, thank you cards, sympathy cards, troubled friendships. So we have some of those unconventional categories um, as well as the traditional cards, but I'm so proud of this app and um, it's so user friendly, it's so easy. And so again, you send the cards via email and so it's, it's animated. So the card comes up out of the, envelope and it turns and does does all of the things and um once we get past this compliance issue you'll be able to send it through text as well sounds like the not corny version of the ones that are already out exactly exactly because there there of course there are um greeting card apps but they're real cheeky and and just like cartoonish but we have like encouragement cards and wisdom cards like things like that like real situations okay i'll definitely i i i so i got an email about it and i'm gonna look into it more for sure. yeah yeah so um so yeah so then um i started podcasting at some point um but i started podcasting because i had written my first book words never spoken and it's a memoir and, and it really is like my journey as a gay person as a black gay person in this country because i think that it is slightly nuanced just because of the way that um gay people or queer people i should say are received in the black church, the black family and the black community. So I write about all of that, but the backdrop of that is my journey as a writer in general. And then I ended up publishing the sequel to Words Never Spoken, which is uh, one thing for certain, two things for sure, a memoir continued. Um, but my third book is a book of quotes. It's called So Much to Say, a book of quotes. So it's three different chapters and it's encouragement quotes, wisdom quotes and um, relationship quotes. And not just romantic relationships, but just interpersonal. Um, and then my fourth book is, you know, is my is my heart and soul, um, is Book of Jewels. And it's 11 chapters. And I believe each of those chapters represent the biggest life lessons that I've learned. So in those chapters, I, I talk about things that I've learned along the way and how I got to those lessons. So, yeah. So I don't know if I mentioned, but I my book, my first book came out mm -hmm. a couple months ago. Which is a memoir, which I can mm -hmm. listen to because I want to start working on my follow up one as well. Yeah, yeah. It's all, it's all called Won't Be Silent, and it's definitely about surviving challenges, coming mm -hmm. out, 
parents being Holocaust survivors is mm -hmm. it a cross to bear pretty much. You know? Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, the joy of writing. I, I'm yeah. I found it before I croaked, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there's yeah. no when we're going these days, but like right. my dad died young, his dad died young, so I was always kind of like apathetic about doing anything because I always oh really I'm gonna go any minute. I called yeah. myself. I was like an IED ready to explode. <laughs> yeah, any minute. But uh, yeah, right. no, I'm gonna send you the book if you're interested. But yeah, and I can send you mine. Yeah, let's do. I'll send you the first one. Yeah. And yeah. you know it's interesting that you say that about writing. You know, you said you're glad you discovered it before you before you left here. You know, it's so it, the thing that I find so interesting about it for me at least. Most of the people around me, including my mom, um, when I first started saying to her, "Well, you know, I'm a writer. This is what I'm going to do." You know, because of course I went through. I I have a degree, but then of course after graduating from college, I was very clear about what I wanted to do with my life, and that was writing. But you know, my mom, you know, my mom was born in 1943. So my mom, her generation is different. It's like, you need to get a job. You need to get one that has a 401k so that you can retire. And her words to me were, that writing thing you can do on the side, that's a hobby. But for me, it was a passion, you know? And it was one of those things that, that hurt me along the way is the way that I like to describe it. Because for, before, before things started to really, before I could make a living doing it is what I'm trying to say. Um, I was really just trying to, you know, I it was just a hustle, you know, just, but it's one of those things that you have to almost prove to people that it's valuable because it's not one of those, and I don't even know if tangible is the word, but it's not like a talent, like a singer where you can display it and show it. People literally have to pick up your work and look at it to determine whether or not it's interesting or you're talented or not. And it just takes a bit it's more. To people, it's hard to get people to read. Correct. So it's hard to convince them. It's over in three minutes, you know. Exactly. I get it. I get it. I, yeah. I, I think. I think everyone that I tell I finished and wrote a book, they're like, "Wow, that's great!" Because people understand. Yes. How hard it is, even if you're not even trying to be a writer, you just know. Everyone, I think, in their heart, thinks their life is interesting enough to be writing. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but, Absolutely. But it's like kudos. And mm -hmm. yeah, so it's great. And I got that a lot when I first published because um, someone said to me, you have no idea like you, you, how, what an accomplishment this is. And they said, because you are a part of a very, very small percentage of people who will do that. And I said, I never really thought about it like that. So, yeah. You know Darnell Brooks? That name sounds familiar. He wrote a book. I forget I forget the name of it. Though. I, I know a Darnell Moore. Maybe that's who I'm thinking about. I mean, yes, Darnell Moore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know Darnell Moore. Yeah, I got it. He gave me his book. It was really good, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I do know Darnell Moore. I haven't read the book, but I do know Darn Darnell Moore. I'm the worst with names. I'm a senior citizen. I'm entitled to names. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, ah. But you're originally from New York, though, right? I born in born in Jersey, and that is a very funny part of the book. And um, yeah, I lived in New York City. Like I'm like a club, an ex club kid from Studio Fifty Four. Okay, I go and uh, New York was great through all my years, but I kept going back. And then I moved to LA in the 90s, then back to New York. I was one of those people that- back, was, Yeah. I wrote my first book in LA. Yeah? Mm -hmm. LA's great. I, I, I think it's unfortunate that it's becoming so costly, but I think that's- mm -hmm. But um, I live in such a great little house. It's like Knockwood. It's, it's- Yeah. You know, <laughs> find the zone that I was able to finally sit down and write the book that I've always wanted to write, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to be in that space that's so calming, you know, it was, yeah, so I'm, I'm yeah, but I think we need to talk about the election. <laughs> I think we have to have a conversation about where we started and met on the Donald mm -hmm. show uh, yeah. on the night of the debate. Now, yeah. I, you know, I just want to put this out there. I said right away, 
I would vote for Joe in a coffin, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The recent development since our meeting about mm -hmm. SCOTUS and what they're doing yeah. turning this country into a monarch. Um, but what do you where where are you where have you landed since that first night where we were all horrified? <laughs> I mean, I don't I don't really think I've <laughs> I've moved much. Because even that night when we talked about it, you know, I, I think Don may have mentioned this, that, you know, maybe we should replace Joe Biden. But like I said that night, like, I don't know if we have enough time. Um, and, and, and when I say time, I mean, in terms of educating the public on these other people that we mentioned, like Hakeem, we mentioned Wes Moore, who, by the way, just mentioned on his social media or something I saw yesterday that he was going to reject um the offer to be like the the new running mate um but i don't know and, and then somebody mentioned uh, gavin newsom yeah. but i just don't know if it's enough time to really raise the money educate people uh make sure that they're on the ballot in all of the states like i just i, I that's what concerns me about replacing I, I don't know if it was you or if it was Richard who had the idea or suggestion. I think it was Richard. Richard, had Richard a... Yeah, Richard and Ben were like gung-ho on that. I mean, I think and I still believe that what we're in is the conversation and the viability. Yeah. And to be honest, and that we can't just circle the wagon and act like everything's fine because nothing is fine. No, it is not. Our entire state of the politics. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Even if Biden wins the election, we're still not fine. We still have... 70 to 80 million lunatics. Yeah, yeah. Have to confront and deal with and Steve Bannon's march against it and they'll never accept. I mean, we're at a weird, it's, it's almost like, it's like, you know, in that movie, you know, Young Frankenstein, you know that movie Young Frankenstein with the townspeople with, the, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. like that, that's where this is all headed to all this like street crazy. You know? Yeah, I mean, it, it's really scary. And, you know, what's even more frightening is this idea that there are people who are conflicted with who to vote for. Um, and, I, and I think it was, well, well, let me go back to the other point that I was saying. I think it was Richard who said, I think what's best is to create like a campaign trail where there's like a Gavin... Uh, and a uh, uh, Hakeem and a West, who all go out on this campaign trail, speaking and lifting Joe up. Um, I think that's a great suggestion. But then I just was was it's so terrifying to me because the repercussions if he does win, like you said, like if he does win, I, I feel like it's a catch twenty two either way. But I'm so I'm so frightened by people who are on the fence. Like, and then this is the point that you made. And you said, you need to vote in, you need to pick one issue that's important to you and vote in that interest. If you're a woman, you need to be voting in the interest of women and reproductive rights. If you're queer or LGBTQ+, plus, you need to be voting in the interest of that. If you're an immigrant, you need to be voting in that. And that is not Trump. None of those things are Trump. Yeah. I, um, I, and I knew one issue to... SCOTUS. Because yeah. If Trump wins, he's going to replace, I said it the other night. Yeah. Joe and Thomas, they're going to resign. They're going to retire, yes. Have horrible Christian nationalist um, uh, Supreme Court. But here's something that came up interesting today. I know everyone's concerned about Kamala, but apparently she's like, there's a recent poll where she's been favored really and the thing that people i mean look they're going to talk about 80 things we're in this conversation space so nobody mm -hmm. rest us for having a, an opinion you know but yeah if, if joe steps down before the election that puts kamala as president interim the incumbent she's the incumbent interim president and I believe she gets like $250 million that's already allocated to Joe. Like the technicality of money that goes over, I'm sure, all of our brains. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? 
Wait, so she'll get this money to do what now? So apparently, like, there's a certain money that's allocated to Joe because he's fundraised. Correct. That goes to the president. So I believe that if he steps down before the election, that it goes puts to her. Kamala into the presidential slot. She is now the incumbent, and that they need to find the vice president. And if they, since we're apparently down by seven points in Pennsylvania, if we get Josh Shapiro as her running mate, we might get back that state, which is critical because it's one of the important states. Mm -hmm. The conversation I was like, well, I thought was very interesting because here we would have everything that I said we shouldn't do, which is a Jew and a black person, you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting, you know what I mean? Like, because we yeah. have certain states. We apparently where he's losing Michigan, period. Even what's her name with the um, Gretchen Whitmer said, there's no way he's going to win. Yeah. Him. We need Michigan. That's why Hillary lost because she never got out of those freaking pantsuits. To right. Form. Which, uh, by the way, I did a post this morning on TikTok and Instagram. Uh -huh. Kamala needs to get out of the nice clothes and get to the farms. There's black farmers. That's been a big story. There's farmer farmers. I know she's been great with colleges because yeah. she's very involved and that's great. Because I think if it would have it, it just playing the Kamala card, which everyone who's afraid for her to be doing this for whatever reason they don't like or that all that other stuff. If I'm willing to vote for Joe in a freaking coffin, I'll vote for Kamala happily. Right. And see, and, and that's to the point that Don made that night when he said, is it that they don't want a woman or is it this woman? I think it's woman. I think it's woman too. But see, here's the thing. I, I had a conversation a few weeks back, and this was before we met. Um, someone said, black folks in particular have been unfair to Kamala. We've been unfair as a society to Kamala, but in particular, black folks have been especially unfair to her because we have held her to this standard because she's a woman and because she's a black woman. And we have this expectation of her as the vice president that we've never had of any other vice president before. And whoever it was said that vice president has always been a supporting role. But for some reason, we have this perception that because she's there and she's the first woman and she's a black woman, that there was going to be this major shift. And, and it's been unfair, like it's been unreasonable. And I posted that on my Instagram, like whenever it happened, it was a few weeks back. Um, and it's true. And whoever it was went on to say, most people can't even name five, five vice presidents. But, but, but we know Kamala because it's a first, it's a woman and a black woman, you know what I mean? So why do we have this expectation of her? Yeah, I mean, I can, re I mean, I can recall the potato guy, what was his name? <laughs> From, oh yeah. Uh, 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 oh God, I can see his. I, oh my God, yeah, he put the e on. He, he spelled it incorrectly, right? I, get it. I, get um, <laughs> I can't remember his name. But that proves the point. So exactly, here's, here's the thing. I feel like she's had a hard shot. As I yeah. think, the presidency has kind of contained her in a way that that's why we had a higher expectation of that. Mm -hmm. Like sending her off to handle the border right away was such a mean thing to do. Yeah. You know, it hasn't been handled for 40 years. She wasn't going to do it either. You know what I mean? Right. That was yeah. Like the first thing. And um, I, I again, I'm just think that we are going to have to take as, as, which was my post from yesterday, we have to approach this like a spiritual path. And we, yeah. have to, we have to just take a day at a time, get through whatever the issue is. And if Joe decides that he wants to come out and say, look, I'm here, I'm fine, and do a series of events that proves to the people that, because he has been bleeding voters. There's no doubt about that, which is nothing to do with even before this uh, the debate. He was bleeding voters. 
because of his weird kind of aggressive, not aggressive Israel that, you know, let's face mm -hmm. it, Gen Z and the pro-Palestine crowd by begging to not do anything but Joe is they're doing, they're not intelligent and mature enough to understand that they're voting against their own lives. Their yeah. Own lives. I mean, honey, I am in my last phases of this, bro. I mean, if we end up with Stinky back in the White House, you know what I mean? I'm just going to post and write, you know what I mean? But if you're young and you want to find a life and you're an, and you're like an immigrant or your family is, was, you're, the trouble you're asking for is mm -hmm. immeasurable. And that was that was what my my next statement was going to be. Like, I'm really concerned about that generation because I really do think that um, they they are going to be the deciding factor. Yeah. And they are so up in arms about what's happening in Palestine. And I'm not saying that they shouldn't be. But 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 what I'm saying is many of them are. If you don't do this, Joe, then we're not voting for you. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like a it's and it's immature. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, but you're hurting yourself. You'll be hurting yourself. And, you know, because like when I look at these things that are coming, that, that can potentially come down the pipeline, like homeless people, it would be illegal to be homeless. Like you couldn't even protest. You wouldn't even be able to protest. Not peacefully or otherwise. And you're going to croak because they're going to get rid of the EPA, <laughs> you know. Correct. <laughs> But I remember in the 70s, but Los Angeles, the sky, the smog that lived on the basin of the L.A. basin, mm -hmm. that's all going to come back. Yeah. You know, anyway. And so much more. Yeah. And so much more. And so it just really makes me nervous because it, it's like, as, as my, my Alexa is going off, oh. but <laughs> as intelligent as they are, it's like they're 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 being blindsided, and and it just makes me nervous. But then there was something you said on the on that uh, panel that we did um, that you know a lot of Jewish folk that are now choosing Trump, and I'm just I, I can't even fathom that, especially with the history of the Holocaust and that kind of thing. Like I, I would think that you would be able to see that this. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm not comparing what could happen here to that, but mm -hmm. like the but foreshadow. The anti-Semitism is to a point where if you think Joe, if you think Donald Trump and the Christian nationalists are here to save you. Correct. They're here for your vote. They're here for their money. And then once they're in power, I did it. I, I had to take down this post because TikTok doesn't let me get too political about Israel. Uh -huh. saying, you know, it's cool. yeah, OK. But I did a picture of the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. the, Christian, the Christians back then, who were the ones that ruined the indigenous people of Mexico and made them and killed them off if they didn't convert, mm -hmm. did that the Spanish Inquisition. If the Jews didn't become Catholics, they were just completely unalive. And mm -hmm. those were the people that had been forced off the land in the Middle East mm -hmm. by they established, you know, Islam. Islam yeah. is twenty five hundred years younger than Hebrew than is than uh, Judaism, and mm -hmm. they, they got into power, and they were like, "Oh, okay, girl, you like go," you know? Yeah. So it's all kind of messy, but I feel like more than anything else, we're Americans. We have to focus on what's good for our quality of life here. Yeah. Anyone that isn't is a fool, and you, if if the Gen Z and these First of all, where do all, I mean, first of all, the covering your face and being violent, like that's what the KKK are not even allowed to do. Yeah, I saw people, your post about that today. I saw it earlier. They're like now wearing a smart little khaki, whatever, you know, like a Rep banana Republican. Yeah. Know? And, you know, and similarly, because I don't want to I don't want anybody to think that I'm singling out Jewish people who may be considering Trump because they are also black folks. You know, oh. who are talking about, oh, well, no, I'm voting for Trump for whatever reason. Yeah. And I'm just like, this is the same. Per but uh, sometimes it's it's a lack of um, information on history. Because it's like, this is the same man who wouldn't even rent property to Black people. This is the same man who wanted to um, 
called for the who who not wanted to who called for the death death penalty of the Central Park Five, who took out an entire ad in the newspaper, you know, calling for their their arrest and the death penalty, you know, and it, it's just like it's unheard of that there are people who look like me who would even think that <laughs> this man is he ha has your best interest. But it also it baffles me with immigrants. Uh, I can't even imagine how Latino. there are the Latinos. Correct. Who are who who are I I I want to say who are even Republican, but let's let let's just start with who are even considering voting for him. Like I, I'm like, do you not know that you you and or your family may be the first to be sent away? It's mind boggling. Because he never answered that question in the debate. Remember? No, he when he talked about he didn't answer any questions. Correct. The problem with where we are as a country is that if seventy plus million people think that somebody that unhinged is who needs to be our leader that shows that we have 70 plus million unhinged people yeah it's intrinsic look we're all human and we all have similar like hates loves crazy yeah. you know we're all nuts but mm -hmm. the thing is to to be clear-eyed enough to say that that unhinged level of psychosis, narcissist is it's too far. It's too far. That's untrustworthy. Yeah. Within, yeah, it's bad. But I can't even fathom how he could have 34 felony charges and still run. Like, it seems like there should have been something in the writing, if you will, that wouldn't have even allowed that. Because, you know, of course, in, I mean, in some states they have turned it, they've overturned it where some felons can now vote, but like that wasn't even possible. Yeah. And then the fact that he can't even handle international diplomacy or foreign affairs or relations by going to certain countries, like how does that happen? How, like how, how, how are they gonna pull that off? He's even the one that says that uh, we were, in, you know, we were, when I was president at the world you know, revered me. They, they laughed at him at the UN bill. They did. They I mean, did. He, the fact that he was, we, again, the fact that he accused Biden of being a liar, like the kind of lies that he does, the pathological liar that he is, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't scare people. If he lies to you about X, he's going to lie to you about Z. And then you are going to be in the crosshairs of a lie that's going to be important for him to lie then you're the why he's going to lie about. Exactly. Like, no one's safe. No, no one. one. And with people like Steve Bannon and Stephen Miller and like, wow. I mean, I, I'm seriously considering it. Like, if, look, when you're raised by concentration camp survivors, yeah. the only place you want to live in is a fascist monarch. And that's why when you said that, that you know Jewish people who are considering him, like I, that's why I can't fathom that. Well, they're not, you know what? They're, I'm in a tiny minority. And I okay. don't know what it's like to know what it's like to be brought up to kind By of- By people who were in the, yeah. Because, yeah, because my mother, bless her heart, always said, I remember it from childhood on, she had seen evil face to face and only wanted to raise good children yeah she only wanted good people and 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 anybody that's going to vote for him is not a good person yeah i mean i could go as far as saying you're not worth fucking breathing anymore but i'll be kind and say you're not a good person so look in the yeah. mirror and know you're not a good person yeah voting for that low life psychotic lying sack of shit, which yeah. the post with a picture of Trump lying sack of shit, and it was taken down. <laughs> now, wait, what were you going to say, though? You said if he gets in. I thought you were going to say that you're going to leave the country. I am seriously considering, and of all places, I would go to Israel because I'll fight for democracy wherever. Because it's interesting, because I have been saying that. And I think that people around me think that I'm joking, but I, I literally do think that I would leave. And I had a conversation with a friend of mine the other day 
and we were talking about you know getting dual citizenship. Um, and I was talking about different countries where it would be easiest to do it. And, you know, considering the kind of work that I do, because I do some social media stuff, too, I was just thinking maybe I could get some sort of a working visa. Right. <laughs> and uh, go to another country. If you look into Spain and Portugal right now. Yes. Very actively. Yeah. Italy, too, now, because people are not reproducing and, you know, whatever. That's that's the situation there. And. Uh, my, my husband's Israeli, so it's been really tough on some level through this whole past few months because his family's all there and, you know, that and that's happening. But, yeah. you know, again, a lot of Israelis think that Joe Biden, that Trump is good for Israel. He's not. He's only interested in what Saudi Arabia can pay his golf things and his... And Saudi Arabia, there is behind friggin' nine eleven. I mean, we're our government yeah. is toxic. <laughs> you know, we're just yeah, screwed. yeah. You know, I just I, I'm still baffled that he even won the the first time. <laughs> I, I really am. I I just I just cannot believe that there were people who actually had faith in him. Um, and then, like you know, with all of the the death that happened as a result of COVID, knowing that he could have done things to prevent it from spreading as quickly as it did, and he did nothing, and he removed. Yet was able to message that all these people didn't want to get these the, the vaccine, you know what I mean? It's almost like he has that unbelievable way of like changing the narrative. That's the whole, you know, Stockholm syndrome thing. I mean, we're just. I think the only thing that can save us is if some way, somehow, these convictions, but I think they're trying to postpone those, those, uh, those convictions, those, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's so pushed off till September. Right. I just, I never thought he was going to, I always thought this was, the whole thing was an effort in futility. And I feel like the only thing we have to do is just know, we did this in 2020. We did this. This is not a foreign, this is not a first time. We've been to this rodeo. Yeah. We have, we have to keep him out of the White House. We've done this. We can do it again. But we have to have everybody on board. Like these friggin' Gen Z students that are like living in like tents, like they're in fucking, you know, Somalia. Like after all, what? what? This is your yeah. life experience? You think, yeah. you know, they're just, they're, they're cooking their own goose. They are. And it is so scary. It truly, truly is scary. I mean, and, and, and just to help you along with this fear issue, because I know what that feels like. When yeah. you look at everybody like they're embarrassing, it feels a little lighter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You're embarrassing. Like the it, it is. The Dyke and, March in New York City this past weekend. Uh huh. Being, they're like faces are covered, their breasts are out, like free the nipple yet. I what? And now the and the whole thing was infatata, intifada, you know. What? They're gonna right. pop off the roof so quick. You have to cover your whole not you know, not just your boobs, your bosom. Yeah, yeah. It's and like, you know, scenario. and I'm not a person that uh whose vote can be swayed by celebrity. But I know that there are people who can be swayed. And I feel like there hasn't, there haven't been enough celebrities, in my opinion, that have spoken out. Now, interestingly enough, um, a little while ago, I was on Instagram and I saw Kerry Washington, Viola Davis posted something that Kerry Washington said, and she was really going into uh, where this government will go or this country will go if he gets into office again. And, you know, she was talking about um, what happened with SCOTUS. And um, she mentioned briefly about uh, Project 2024 or 25. Um, well, honey, it's here now. because of it, right, Yeah. And so I'm, I'm, right. you know, like when I think about, right, when I think about these celebrities that really have major influence, I'm just like, well, and I know everybody's not political, 
But I'm like, well, why hasn't someone said anything? Like, are they just going to sit by? I mean, other than like the view and stuff like that. But I mean, like nobody is really speaking out about it. All right. Two comments about that. First of all, Taraji P. Henson did a whole thing. She that- did. She did. And she has. Most Googled. I am from a different camp. I believe the reason why Joe Biden won in 2020 was because we, the people, on social media galvanized. We were in one mind. It was like, say no and yes to Joe. And and I feel like if we rely on celebrities, we're fucked. And I agree. And that's why I was saying like, I'm not a person that can be swayed, but I know that there are people who can be. And and, 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 because there are people, we have to think about the people who who have no clue who to vote for. Not even just the presidential, but even in the local elections who have no clue. Like I do a lot of live streams and stuff on my social media, YouTube and Facebook. And I've said to people, listen, if you're not sure, Google these people. Google them just like people have vision board parties, have a have a uh, an election party where you sit around and you talk about the different candidates with your cir- circle of people. And you talk about the do's, the don'ts, the why's and who's and all of those things. You know, but I just think that, um, I don't know. It it, it just really is frightening. You know what I would like to see the Democrats do? First of all, you know how the Republicans have those kind of, uh, even if it's just a campaign event, then that's not necessarily Trump, where just the other politicians go and like rally a bunch of people that gets tons of media for that whole week. Mm-hmm. So I wish that 10 of our top Democrats would go on a bit of a tour like that. Sure. Yeah. So it's it's definitely not relying on the celebrities, but the people that we're ultimately voting for. Yeah, yeah. Would be awesome. But I've been talking, I've talked to the DNC about it. They're just, nobody's home. Nobody's home in the messaging department. Nobody's home. They're not interested in engaging like, if you look at their TikTok page, it's embarrassing. You know, like, no. Jasmine Crockett really uh, brought up a really <laughs> great point. What'd she say? Wait, what did you say? I didn't hear it. I love her so much. I, I do too. Um, I and want her said, and Jared Moskowitz to be president, vice president in any which way. I really, I really do think that she's going to go further than, you know, where she is now. I, I really do think that she's going to go for a higher office. At some point, um, she said it was like the day or so after the debate, and she was saying how she's so disappointed in so many people for giving Joe Biden such a hard time for having a bad debate. She said, "Did he have a bad debate? Absolutely, he did." She said, "But you know, the fact that we're ready to throw him to the to the wayside." And no one is focusing on all of the lies that Trump told during the debate. Like we've made it, we've made the conversation after the result more so about how bad Joe did and less about what Trump did that was just completely fallacious. Like we don't even talk about that. And when you think about it, when I look look back, it's just like she's absolutely right. Every all of the conversation was about how he was bad and how we need to figure it out because we're in the, we're in deep shit. But less conversation. And so that became the the conversation. And that's what people are, are focusing on. And that becomes everybody's new panic, so to speak. You know, and, and she made a really good point. It's just like she's everything we need in our politicians. Yeah. She needs to be going on a whistle stop. Remember I talked about that whistle stop stuff? Yeah. And Ben said, yeah, but you need somebody at the top of the ticket. No, we don't. We need surrogates on a whistle stop tour in every important corner, in every swing state. Get our favorite people who are the ones that are savvy with social media. Mm-hmm. Anybody over 60. People Young like folks. Over 60, stay home. Just <laughs> right. Home. No, I'm sorry. I'm over me. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I feel because I just wrote a book about me. So, you know, by the end of it, I'm like, I'm so sick of myself. Yeah. And then, you know, the other thing, too, is like, I I, I don't know if you've ever listened to The Breakfast Club or watched The Breakfast Club. Like, they're literally the number one 
urban radio syndicated urban radio station in the country. And there have been things that they've done that have made me feel like they've confused their audience, which is full of a lot of young people of color. And, you know, when they say, oh, I just don't know. And then, like, I just feel like you need to stand firm in a decision and just say it instead of saying, well, yeah, I just don't know. You know, I don't know about Joe. And like, you're making people Conf Some people need to be led, is what I'm trying to say. That's because we're Democrats and we don't know how to make one message clear and hold on to the, you know, that's our, mm -hmm. that's our MO with the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so it's just really frustrating because even like Charlemagne, who's the host on that show, he went on The View and I think Sonny was like, well, you know, I just, I want you to say like who you're going to vote for because you have a lot of young people that are watching you and not saying, he said, well, I think it's obvious that I'm not voting for Trump, but no, it's not. Because I mean, he was, because also there's this perception or this idea that, well, I'm just not gonna vote for either one. As if that's a a solution. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not a flex. No, but, it's not. But it's I, not. Look, I think, I think we have to get through this horrible moment, right? It'll be mm -hmm. curious to what Joe, how he is on Friday, because he's going to be on George Stephanopoulos. Mm -hmm. And I think as Democrats, we have to kind of rally. And whether it's for him in the coffin or Kamala and whoever, or whoever ends up Joe saying, I'm going to help support this guy, the way Ben was making that speech. But it's kind of anyone who votes for a lying criminal has lying criminal in their heart and a misogynist lying and and every bad thing you could possibly be yeah. yeah like this is again i feel i've been saying this for a long time and i love that uh ja um jasmine said the same thing you have to love yourself when yes you she did i saw that and I really, you know, I, I and I just I believe that so much in my heart too, and yeah, and and we can do this. We've done this. This is not the first time at the rodeo. Ava, hey, I'm so terrified. Like, 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 I am terrified. I like know. with with the end of the <laughs> I know you are. Yeah, like literally, like, like, I'm telling you, when he won that year, I like most people. Went to bed thinking, oh yeah, he's there's no way he's gonna win. Let me go on to bed. But when I tell you I saw those results before I went to bed, and I was like, you've got to be kidding. You did not sleep then. No, <laughs> I, I I just I was I was blown away. Yeah. And so like just anticipating this election, and just wondering what that's going to look like. Now I will say that I've seen that President Obama has been doing a lot more. <laughs> Uh, alongside Joe Biden, like I've been seeing a lot of um, things on my Instagram, like sponsored ads with them speaking and talking about. Things. Like, and he even posted about the debate and how he had a bad night and whatever, whatever. I can't hear you. We need. Well, I'd like to see Michelle do a little something. Yes, yes, I, I would mean, love for her. I mean, it make you know. I guess this is the thing. Joe has to really come out one way or another. He's got a few days left. Either you're, I hate to sound like Heidi Klum, but either you're in or you're out. Or you're out. <laughs> but just, listen, let me just impart one thing about fear, what you shouldn't okay. be afraid of, okay? Yeah. Because take it from someone who, you gotta wake up pretty early in the morning to scare me. Mm -hmm. You survived and thrived through Trump. Mm -hmm. right? You got the beautiful green cabinets. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you've been creative. You've stayed the course. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll survive that. But Not I think this time it's going to be up. different, though. You know what? It won't. You're... You make a decision in your everyday life to how you want to live your life. 
Are there going to be obstacles? The thing that I know for sure, there's a reason why we had so much horror during that whole time. It's because we were so tuned in to the horror. Like, there's no way I'm putting myself through that again. You could yeah. throw a freaking A-bomb on New York City. You know what I mean? I am mm. not going to allow myself to give what he does, which we already know now is going to be nothing but horrifying bullshit. Yeah. My everyday life. Because yeah. we're going to keep, we're, we have a commitment to keep writing. We have a commitment to keep sharing ourselves with other people. That can change. And it's better to be the light than it is to reflect only the darkness. Sure. But I feel like, yeah, it, are we all concerned? Of course. That's why I try to do whatever I can to lighten the load. Like, see how embarrassing these, you know, the dyke march with like, your face is covered, but your tits are out. Mm -hmm. That's just embarrassing. Right. You know, so you find like, it just elevates your perception of life. Mm -hmm. Find something. I, I think that what I'm saying though also is I, my concern is for marginalized communities, especially communities of color. You know, we've already seen what has happened with um, the contention that, that happens a lot of times between the police and communities of color. And so I think about that and I think about how that may even escalate again, even more. Um, and so many racists were emboldened. And then if this is truly, if, if, if he gets in and he literally creates some sort of a dictatorship where he is the last president for the rest of his life, that could be a long time. You know, and so I think about but I also think about seniors, you know what I mean? Like prescription drugs and, and food stamps and, you know, yeah. people who, who don't have a lot to eat, have, you know, a lot of money. Listen, this is why we have nothing but to focus on that we've done this once. We'll do it again. We kept it yeah. in the house. We'll do it again. <sighs> we'll do it again. Yeah. To trust. Yeah, yeah. Trust. You have to look, you have to embrace your people that are in your community, that are in yeah. your social media community specifically, and and help them along. You have to be the light. Yeah. You, yeah. Up, you know, you yeah. have a responsibility to be the light. Right. And, and don't let yes, yeah, so, you know, everyone's afraid. Everyone's like a scared little kid deep down inside anyway. Especially that big gross baboon, you know. Right. I mean? He's just all masqueraded and makeup up and blown out hair and little wigs. <laughs> you know, under all that is a scared little kid whose mother thought he was fucking annoying. You know? Yeah. Yes. You're right. Uh, You're right. Yeah, but in any event, um, I'm glad to make your connection. Yes. I think you're. Uh, yeah. It was like. You know, that's the whole beauty of social. This is why I always say you have to find the lemonade out of the lemons, mm -hmm. which is what happened through COVID for me. Yeah, yeah, certainly. I worked on a whole new life. I did too. I did too. You're it's right. Labor. It's the fruits of our labor. Yeah, yeah. And I, I really did thrive during COVID. Huh? Yeah, I did. Like business thrived, and um, because so many people were at home, so book sales were through the roof, and you know people were shy. Not you know I have merch and things like that that I sell through my website, so they were buying stuff because people were at home bored. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, and then I know a lot of people who who were in business who had to pivot, and that was the best thing that could have happened to them as well. Yeah. Uh, so there definitely, you know, there was some silver lining. Yeah, no, no. I sold a documentary that's supposed to air this October on Max. Congrats. All under the moniker of Won't Be Silent. It's all everything I stand for. It's the name of my book. Yeah. So that's the brand. Okay. And I'm definitely outspoken, so it makes sense. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes, you know? Right. Well, good but luck with I, that. I, I, I think I'll need it. I need the luck every which way, shape, or form. You know, I've started. It's like I found 
a new career at an old age. So mm -hmm. I'm starting out over again and it's exciting, but it's a definite uphill battle, you know? Yeah. So selling That's books ain't easy, honey. It just that you have to- No, it is not. It is not. And I, I literally, like my friends who were with around me when I first published, because I, I published my first book in 2012, and my friends who were around, whose couches I may have slept on, or whose homes that I lived in for, you know, periods of time without paying any rent, or whose cars I drove because I didn't have a car, because uh, all of my resources were going into printing books, going city to city to do a book signing. So it was, you know, at one point I was working for the books and then the, the, the tides turned and then the books started working for me, you know. Um, but it was it was definitely a journey. It was definitely a journey. And uh, it was a character builder. And um, I appreciate the journey now looking back. And it wasn't as long or as difficult as I thought it was at the time. But at the time, it felt like, oh, my God, if it, I, I just didn't know if I would if I had it in me to keep going, you know, because you just don't, I knew that I knew what was possible. I knew what God was capable of doing in my life. I just wasn't sure if he would do it for me. And so I just didn't know if I had the strength to hold on. And um, I did, and it, and, it, and it worked out, you know, and I'm grateful. And that's why I so much wanted to talk to you because I'm in this place where I want to connect with writers. I don't know. Yeah. And Again, I'm like not young for me to start networking. Yeah, and yeah. Like, no, I can't. Yeah. That's embarrassing. That's why yeah. I published because I didn't want to. I didn't want to go through the hoops of an agent saying no and a publisher yes. and waiting four months. Like, bitch, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna hawk my shit if I have to like crawl up the fucking mountain myself with the book in my. Listen, head. I used to have books in the trunk of my car. Right. I didn't even have a website at the time. I used to have books in the trunk of my car. And because it's it's the story of this gay person who's finding his way and my first relationships, first sexual experiences, all of those, all, all behind the backdrop of I'm a writer, you know? Um, there were so many gay guys who purchased the book first. But because the community is so small, it just like spread like wildfire. But then it became women who really sustained it, you know, because women read more books than anybody. Um, but it was just one of those things where, like you, I didn't want to wait for a publishing house to give me permission to tell my story. And so I said, that was my that was my whole ideology at the time. I don't want to wait for a, a publishing house to give me permission. I'm going to tell my story. Because I literally could be sitting here now, 12 years later, waiting, still sending query letters. They're out for some person yeah i agree yeah yeah so it's definitely been rewarding and so people ask me all of the time like um well do you think i should self-publish or go the traditional route and i'm like if you ask me i'm going to tell you to self-publish but the road is not smooth you no, know no, what no. i mean the road on my nephew was published by like a big publishing company he got like a nice chunk of money but that's it they didn't help on pr they yeah they're not marketing yeah. it was like here go yeah, you still yeah, you still have to sell yourself because they're not gonna do that. Well, I thank you so much. Have a wonderful Fourth of July weekend. You as well. And I'll get your address. We'll swap addresses because Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, All yeah. right, and thanks so much. Thanks for having me. This was great. Yeah, no, no. You're the great I, I feel so, I'm so glad I asked you to do this. I really yeah, me too. Me too. But we'll definitely stay in touch. I was just in LA for my birthday in May. So if we had met sooner, we would have we could have had lunch or something. May, you know, May, what? May what? May 4th. May 6th. No wonder, You're May 6th? No wonder we like each other. You're brilliant and genius. <laughs> <laughs> As are you. <laughs> I love it. I love a good talk. <laughs> All right, we'll talk soon. Yeah, be well. All right, you too.